Thank you very much for coming back to the channel. If you remember this particular thumbnail, I shown off this particular animation in, well, about a year ago. This animation was two years ago, showing you how to make a cape. And unfortunately, I went back through some of my old work and I see that I have several mistakes to correct. So this video is an update to these two videos showing you how to make those corrections on this particular cape for this particular figure. Now each Batman figure is totally different. The install, the cape, the pattern, etc. We're going to focus on this Arkham Batman because it's one of the current figures that's out right now. And I know a lot of you are desiring to make your own cape or wanting to acquire a cape for your particular Arkham Batman. There's no painting in this video. It is only about sewing a cape. So for the next 26 minutes, I'll show you how I fixed my errors on this particular figure. And the best thing to do is to get started by showing you how that process starts. Once you get your new Batman out of the box, he's going to look like this. He does look really nice. A lot of sculpting, a lot of reuse. We're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the actual process of revising that cape. And by the way, yes, I will be using those computer parts in the back because I like those. And they're rechargeable batteries, so I can use them over and over until I get sick of it or somebody complains. In any case, to continue with the Batman here, it's the same design as before as far as the install on the neck and the cowl. So the removal will be the same. So you can refer back to that other video so you can see some of that process. In the meantime, I'll show you what I did here. Now, I've already gone ahead and done so, heated the figure and removed the cape and cowl together. It is only glued down. And you do have to keep in mind that it is a one piece, or I should say, both pieces are glued together. And the main portion of that glue is on the bottom of the cape, holding it down to the torso. So you'll have a neck peg, you'll have the back peg for the cape, and you'll have the front two pegs for the cowl. So keep that in mind. There are four pegs holding it in, center, back, and two up front. And you'll see that when you remove the actual cape. So you'll have to make sure you heat it up properly so that you don't tear those. Do not use a knife when cutting that center peg. Do not use a knife when cutting the back peg. If you want to cut that back peg, that's fine. You won't be able to see it when you have the cape on it, but it does make a difference if you don't cut it properly. So it's just best to fill it in with your choice of epoxy. And you'll see that in just a moment. So you don't have to clean up the cape because we're not going to reuse it. We do want to remove the cowl from the cape itself. And for that, you will have to heat the figure up once more. And obviously you can remove the actual sculpt or the head from that neck peg. It is a whole separate piece, which is great. It makes it really easy to work on. The reason you want to remove it is because that cowl sits on the cape. And that's what we want to do with the new cape. Unfortunately, I didn't do that on the older videos. I did not insert the cape into the cowl. I used the cowl that had the pegs as a base and it just made it really thick and that cowl was actually floating on the new cape. So here, as you can tell, I've already done so, but you need to remove that cowl from the cape very carefully. You don't want to tear it. You want to keep it as pristine as possible. And once you remove it, you'll see that it really only had glue on the edges. So it makes for an easy removal. Now you see that neck hole? You want to reproduce that same neck hole on the new cape so that you can install it properly. So you can install it right into the cowl and glue it to the inside. That way, the new cape will have um, no gappage when you seat it down. Now you see the back? I filled it in with, with epoxy. You can use your own choice of filler. And I did the same for the front. And that is just going to be able to hold that cape flush to the back if you wanted to glue it down. 
Personally, I don't. But if you want to, you can. Of course, you will have to repaint it. So fill in those gaps with your choice of filler. Whether it's epoxy or milliput, you decide. Use what you got. Just make sure you fill it in. Don't leave it hollow. It will make a difference in the end result of your cape and you're not going to be satisfied with it. Now you will have these gaps on the inside or the sides of the cowl. You need those because those are going to be filled in with the new cape. So don't be discouraged if you see those gaps underneath the cowl. Let me pull this down a little bit more so you can see it because it's out of the camera sight. There we go. There's a gap right here at the front and should be all the way around continuously. So make sure you leave that because you're gonna need it. So now that you have everything taken apart, you've got your material ready to go, make sure that when you set everything ready to cut, you have a new blade on your cutter. Yes, these are expensive, but a new blade makes all the difference in a clean cut. So. About 25 bucks for a set of five. Yeah, it'll set you back some. Now the key to this, and you can take a look at the other videos that I've done before, it's not the pattern cut. It's how I install it. However, this time, not only did I use this fabric tape again, but I want a nicer, cleaner seam. So what I did is I folded over this edge without inserting any wire or any guides, and then I folded it over. So I'll fold over the glued edge. And now I ended up sewing this edge on top of itself to give me a thicker and a cleaner edge. It looks really, really nice. Now there is a trick to this. Because I do want that space for the wire, I ended up using a styrene rod, a very small styrene rod, to be able to allow that space for the wire. I will be using a 20 gauge wire. You can go with something thinner, but the thinner the wire, the weaker or the less it'll hold that pose. The thicker the wire, the better it'll hold. But if you go too thick of a wire, it's gonna be really difficult to install it and it's just really gonna be bulky. So you want to stay with maybe a 20 to 24 gauge wire. Anything less than that or higher number is gonna to be too soft or too weak. You can use it for the inner splines, but for the outer edge, you need a 20 gauge. So going to the sewing machine, you need to use a zipper foot. A zipper foot is gonna be the key to actually making that edge for that wire to slide into. Now remember, I used the styrene rod to put in between the folded edge. And in that folded edge, I then sewn it as close as possible to the styrene rod without tapping into the styrene rod. And that makes use of a zipper foot. If you don't have one, you'll have to do a search on eBay, find one for your particular machine and learn how to use it. So practice on a few scrap pieces of material before you go into your actual cape. Clips are always gonna be essential, so keep them close at hand. Um, it's your choice what clips you wanna use. I just have these, but you can choose whatever you want. And yeah, don't put it under the foot just like I did. It's just not gonna work. So once you place your material in the zipper foot, the zipper foot has an opening on the edge for the needle. So you will have to move your needle to the left or, left or right side, depending on your machine, mine is on the left, and you'll place the edge of the zipper foot right next to that styrene rod that's wrapped. That styrene rod will act as a guide for that zipper foot to not go over the edge. And because the needle is already pre-designated in that particular spot to sew into, it will always give you a straight line being that you have a guide or edge for it to sew against. And as you can see here, I've got the clip underneath the foot. It's not gonna work. I gotta remove it and my mistake for showing you that. But in any case, once you've got that out of the way and you've got a clean path for that zipper foot, you can sew all the way down. Now, this styrene rod, I only have a, por a part of it, about 10 inches. So I have to slide it down into the area that I need that guide. So 
because it's not sewn into permanently, I can slide that styrene rod up and down that edge and create that margin or that channel for my wire to slide into. So I'll let you watch this rest of this clip and I'll get back to you in just a moment. <laughs> Now there's a reason why I let you watch it in real time and it was to show you that sometimes it's not as easy as it looks and you do have to take your time with it and maybe repeat it, practice it before you go into your actual cape. But look at the nice clean edge that it can leave you. Really, really nice edge or seam for you to slide that wire into and it just looks that much nicer on your finished product. And of course, don't forget that these ends, you'll have to singe those down so that they don't unthread. If you tie them right at the end here, you're gonna end up closing the gap to add the wire. Now you'll have to repeat the same process, the same zipper foot, the same use of the technique of that styrene rod so that you can make the splines on the inside of the cape. Some of the capes have them on the outside. This particular cape will carry them on the inside so that you don't see them visibly. Now the reason you want to use this same technique is that because every time you make a spline for the wire, it takes up material. So the more splines you have, the more material you're folding it up and taking away from the size of the cape. So if you want to go with a larger cape, 
you do need extra material because after you sew it down, it's going to diminish the size of that cape. So a larger cape requires more material. If you're going with a small cape, you still need a lot more material than what the cape is finally going to uh, be seen or display because you're going to be sewing the splines into the back. If there are no splines to sew, any pleats to sew, then don't worry. You're not going to be sewing up more material. Now take a look here at how clean that spline looks when it's sewn and how thin it is, allowing you to place a very small wire into that channel. Take a look at this. This looks so much nicer than the previous capes that I had because there was so much material that I ended up sewing. Um, it just didn't need that much space for a thin wire. Now, this is what it would look like on the inside. Small wire channels. Great. Less material sewn. The cape can stay larger. This is going to make it really easy. And besides, it's all consistent. However, yes. If you're noticing some of the mistakes, I will point them out as well. I did not sew all the way to the top, and that was my mistake. Now, the reason why you want to cut a channel or a hole for that neck peg is so you can visually check for errors. And this is what I'm doing now, and this is what I'm going to show you. This is the actual current figure. It's got the new emblem. This is the new uh, cowl that goes with the actual cape. And look how much nicer already the cape looks on this figure. However, the back, you can see all of my pleated mistakes. And unfortunately, I can't have this go to my customer this way. That's why this is a prototype. You're always going to have one or two capes that just don't make the cut. Literally, you're going to have to keep them or scrap them. But this is what it would look like if you did not want to attempt to do this again. This is what it looks like in the back. This is what it looks like toward the front. If this is all you did, this is your first cape, don't worry about it. You can always make another one later. Keep it as your prototype. Keep it as a reminder of what mistakes you can avoid for your next project. Now, I'm gonna show you what it is that I did so that I can correct for those issues. And I'm glad I made this one to be able to share with you. I didn't do that on the last video. If you want to keep this cape and add the wire, it's still gonna look good. It's gonna look like this. This is the same cape with those mistakes. I just added the wire to it and I set it on top of the sculpt. Well, under the sculpt on the body itself. It still looks good. It'll still pass for a decent cape, but it's not what I can give to my customer and actually, it's not one that I would ever want to keep again. Now, remember, the cape pattern isn't the issue. It was the way it was sewn. But I want to show you how to keep the splines even so that you don't have to guess and measure over and over. Find the center of your cape, fold it from the center, meet up with the spline or the scallop on the bottom, and then iron it in and do that for every single one until you have both sides matching. That clip in the center will help you center your direction of your scallops and splines together instead of guessing and measuring. And once you've got that done, then you can go to your sewing machine, put that styrene rod in the center and start sewing. Now, we do have to have a neck hole for the peg. So on the cowl, there is a odd shaped peg. We'll have to measure out visibly, or if you want to use a measuring uh, device, a ruler, etc., tape, you can, but you can just eyeball it because you've already got the center down and then cut a small opening. Now this is stretch pleather. So once you find and cut the neck opening, you can stretch that small opening around the peg. That way it fits snug. Do not glue it in. You only want to eyeball it. And the reason you want to do this is obviously because you want to remove that one piece so that you can continue sewing. Place it on the body 
and get a visual of how it's looking. Every time you sew one of these splines into place, you want to visually check that the next one is going to fall in the place you want. If for some reason you are off, either left or right on that spline, you can always re-iron it to give you a guide to place that styrene rod. A visual test is needed before sewing the next spline into place, either it's the left or right side. And it will show you if you've sewn up enough to the top to have it lay under the cowl. If that opening or that beginning stitch does not fall under the cowl, you can always go back and stitch it back up high enough so that it will fall and hide under the cowl, giving the illusion that it comes from underneath the cowl. This is what the cape now looks like. I've done all those steps and this is what it looks like with no pleats and no wire. If this is all you did and this is all you want to do, it looks so much better. Keep in mind, this is a single layer, not a double layer of pleather. This is the same cape, now with the pleats. And as you can tell in the back, all of the pleats meet up at the top under the cowl. It looks so much cleaner. It looks so much nicer. However, there's no wires, only the pleats. If this is all you did, if this is all you want to do, because you want a museum pose, it's great. The cape makes this figure looks so much better. However, you can go a step further and of course, add the wire. The wire to the edge, remember, is a 20 gauge wire. The wires in the center, you can decide which ones you want. If you go too thick of a wire, it's gonna be really difficult to fit it under the cowl. 20 gauge wire is what works on the edge. In this clip, the, the uh, cape is not glued because, well, I have to send it to my customer. They did not send me the figure. So the cape in this clip is not glued. The next video or clip, this is my figure. And this is the one with the mistakes. I did glue this down onto mine just for the clip. And it looks like this. So I'm going to leave you with this video. I hope that this gives you some more insight and ideas as what you can do with your Batman capes. If you like the video, please comment, like, and of course, subscribe. I'm approaching 7,000 subscribers and with your help is the only way I can get there. In the meantime, keep customizing those figures.
Here's just an extra for this clip. I did have a few of these sculpts and I painted them up and I swapped them on these figures. Too short of a video to share by itself, so I added it here at the end. I hope you like it. We'll see you next time.